In this chapter, we're going to learn all about energy. And there's really so many kinds of energy, but we're going to focus only on a few, the more common ones in A-levels. But before we go into anything, let me just make one thing very clear to you. You know, all the forms of energy in the world, in the universe, it cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. Maybe from gravitational to kinetic, kinetic to potential. Potential to chemical energy. It just, it's just changing here and there. So if when we say energy is lost, what we really mean is that energy, maybe kinetic, has been converted into heat. Thermal energy, which we cannot really use. And not as easy to use. So remember these two important facts about energy. So in this process of changing energy, let's call this a change in energy type, usually, uh, it's associated with what we call work done. We do work because there's a change in energy. Why I can lift my hand up? Because there's a change in energy. My body got chemical energy in my cells and I'm able to lift my hand up and by going up away from the earth, I increase my gravitational potential energy. So that's all a change in energy work done. We'll be talking about work done a lot. So might as well, let's sit down and think about what work done is uh, in the first place. So remember work done, we sometimes use the symbol W Sometimes we use WD for that. And this is in a unit of Joule because remember what is work done? Work done is really a change in energy. The change in energy can cause the work to be done or you use work done to change the energy. The same thing. So the definition you want to write here is that work done is the product of force and displacement. But not just any force, any displacement. Remember, force is a vector. Displacement is also a vector, got direction, so direction matters. So force times displacement in the direction of the force. We'll see a little bit more what this means. In direction of force. So we'll have W equals to F times S. S for displacement, sometimes we use F times D also. It's fine. <laughs> you can use F, D, F, S. So let's say I have a box right here on a surface that's smooth. And I use a force to pull this box in a certain direction. So this force, the purple color one, is doing work on the box. So I'm going to write here, doing work. So the box may be at rest. Suddenly it starts to move. That's an increase in kinetic energy. But anyway, we'll worry more about that later. So we have also displacement. So maybe the box starts off at here. Then after a while, you, the force do work, it has traveled a certain displacement or certain distance to the right. So how would you find? You take force times S. The work done is work done by the force F, which is the F that you are going to use here. Now, what if you take the string and you tie this box, but you are not pulling it at an angle, um, not pulling it parallel. Instead of parallel, you pull at an angle wall. Wow. So this force, how are? Uh, this force is doing work, yes. But remember the important thing we said just now? It must be in the direction of force. The product in the direction of force. So what you have to do now is you need to be careful and like, oh, actually... We need to resolve the force such that it is in this direction. Of course, there's a vertical component. And you take this Fx. Ah, how to resolve force again? If you know this data, you can find the force. So what we can do now is instead of Fs, we have to modify a bit and say W equals to, hmm, what's the Fx? Ah? Adjacent hypotenuse cos. Ah, so we say Fx cos theta times the distance you travel in that plane. So that will be times S. Hey, why I write Fx? Ah, this is Fx is F cos theta. Okay, I'm going to write that down here. Fx is F cos theta. And there you go. So the final answer here, especially when your force and your displacement is not parallel, you have to do some trigo to resolve. So that will be this. Make sure this and this is force is parallel. So this is work done by this force in the direction of displacement. Fs cos theta. 
Now you might be pausing and wondering like, so miss, why the equation keep changing one? Why is it sometimes fs, sometimes it is fs cos theta? Actually how? Actually, you just stick to it, you just write fs cos theta anyway. Because if there is no angle between your force and your displacement, when angle is zero, cos of zero is one. So this whole thing disappear. If they are parallel to each other, I uh, so no problem. But then no, you say, Miss, what if what if my force is this way, ho, but my object move to the right? Wow. Opposite direction. So this 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 force is not doing work. Doing negative work. Mm, why? Uh? Because the angle between these two vectors is 90 deg uh, 180 degrees. Cos 180 degrees, what? Press calculator and see. Say, miss, isn't cos 180 negative 1? Yeah, no. So, if your force and your displacement is in different direction, suddenly you have a negative work done, which basically means your force uh, is doing negative work done. So don't worry if you find this concept strange. We'll try out some past questions all along this whole chapter that will, you know, you get a chance to practice all this thing. One last thing to add. If you're wondering where this fs cos theta comes from or rather fs where does this come from actually let me give you a preview this is a bonus a bonus tip the original original form of this work done ah, actually is some strange complicated maths behind it one the original work done is actually force which is a vector dot displacement which is also a vector but sometimes the original form that you see in uni maybe if you do this in uni is that it's actually the integral of f ds wow how to solve okay let me just give you a heads up ah. if you feel like mister this mess is a bit killing me you, you hang in there first we'll get to the last part of graphs to understand the graph you need to see where this come from so if i assume hmm, how do i simplify this if f is constant that is an assumption. Maybe the average force is constant. Okay, sure. Then my integral goes away and all this becomes f dot s. So remember we talked about the arrows matter, the direction of the force down here and the displacement vector. Where are you moving to versus where is the force pulling you? This is where it comes into play. When you dot two vectors together, you get a scalar. So work done is a scalar. Joules my energy. Ah, yes. The unit is joules but when you dot the product anyway so the dot product rule wow this suddenly changed color something strange is happening here is f s dot product hmm cos theta and there we go that so this is the maths behind it this is the diagram method where we just draw and we say okay you must have force and displacement in the same direction if it's not in the same direction you got to do some trigo resolution or just remember that these are vectors dotted together okay anyway one last thing to add is that we oftentimes um, have to think about graphs especially in the next chapter after this so if let's say i want to draw a graph of um, what shall i draw a graph force is changing s is changing well we'll say what what if force is not changing let's say force s Eh, what force S? What am I saying? Force F displacement S. Up here, we said just now that if F is constant, this is true. Yes, you can only use F S is F if F is constant or is an average. So if F is constant, you have something like this. So when you want to find the energy, hmm, look at this integral. When we see this worm looking thing, it generally means the area under the force displacement graph. So if you want to find the area, this thing, this, my friends, is what we call the work done. Area is the work done. And what is the area of a square? Uh, well, you see, we are at force F and you just went a certain displacement. So it'll just be force, which is the side, times the length, which is the displacement, whatever that displacement is. So 
W equals to F times S is also the area under a graph of Fs if you assume force is constant. Will we encounter cases where force is not constant? Yes, but we will not be required to calculate it. Just a heads up, if the your force is changing, your graph will look maybe something like this. Slow. Um, how to draw? Uh? Go up, come down. Wow, what is this? How to find? They won't ask us to calculate, don't worry. Uh, but you need to know that what is the area under the force displacement graph? Work done. So this is work done, aka change in energy. You can see already. Ah, yeah. nah. Work done, change in E. And this is also for force displacement. Okay, so that's the main ideas of what is force, uh, what is work done in relation to force. Remember, it is a scalar quantity. It's just joules only, energy. Don't care energy to which direction. This is a scalar. However, the vectors matter because the origins of work done actually came from two vectors. So depending on where the arrow is, you need to resolve, do your trigger, and you'll be okay. All right, so let's go look at some examples to better understand this idea of uh, force time distance and changing energy. So I'll see you in the example video. But that's all for this one. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.